Hey everybody, it's GliderCat and it's time to play. Today we're going to start a Let's Play series here on a game called Complex Sky. And if you haven't uh, seen the preview video I did for that, you may want to check that out first. Uh, kind of goes over just at high level what the game is all about. But let's just jump right in here. Click New Game. And at the start of the game, you can pick kind of some starting settings here in the form of corporations. So here we've got three different uh, options, and I'm not gonna try to pronounce these, but you can see that based on which corporation that we pick, we'll have different um, benefits and drawbacks. So for example, this particular corporation uh, has two characteristics. One is it's an aqua estate, and that gives us a plus three water production and minus two population growth. And then it's also got this infallible city characteristic that gives us uh, plus two reduced maintenance costs and then minus two heavy industry specialized. Now, I don't fully understand all the details on those, but we can look through these and see, and then we can always click this uh, kind of regenerate button to get new corporations to, to, uh, to choose from. So let's just look quick and see uh, what makes the most sense. This is going to give us some more cash, slower population growth, and then a little bit more pollution. Now pollution, I believe we're going to be able to control fairly easily. So that's not too bad. This one has pollution clearing rate. And like I said, I think it's not too hard to clear the pollution. Okay. Plus three heavy industrial specialized plus five shared controller capacity. And the shared controller capacity is not, not such a big deal either. Let's go ahead and choose the one that's got the tax gain. So we'll go with that Dunoon Corporation. And then the next choice is, I think, mainly a difficulty setting here. You can choose Master Scientist, which has a research cost reduction. Or you can do Master Architecture, which has a credit inflation reduction and a building credit cost reduction. So if I... Right now we're choosing Master Scientist, and we'll keep an eye on this difficulty level here, 54% hard. If I click Master Architecture, it goes to being a little more difficult. So I'm gonna choose the easier route. And then the last option you have is if we open up this, uh, this little section here, boom, we can tweak a bunch more of the starting conditions. But I'm just gonna go with the defaults for this playthrough. We'll stick with Master Scientist, and we'll go with this Dunoon Corporation. We'll hit Start. All right, so it's going to spin up the map. Here we go. I guess you'd call this a map, a three-dimensional map. So there is our little starting city. It has a single building on it. All right, so here's a little pop-up. Uh, you're playing an alpha version of Complex Sky. I'm a sole developer of Complex Sky, and there may be some overseen bugs or game balance issues which make the game easier or harder. To help in my development process of the game, be sure to leave any suggestions and feedback on my Discord server. And I have a link to that. I'll put a link to that in the in uh, this video's description. And it's also, I believe, in the uh, preview video uh, description, the link to the Discord server. It says this game may have many unique mechanics that are different from city building genre. So recommend you read all the tutorial carefully. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And there's a link to the Discord server here, I believe. Uh, we won't do that right now. Have one for the tutorials and right mouse click to close this. Cool. So here's our city. The first thing that we want to do is jump into settings. So let's go do that. Cause there's a couple settings I'm going to recommend you consider changing if you uh, start playing the game. So we've got autosave. You can set that to your liking. Um, I might do 10 minutes actually. And then I'm not sure what primary and secondary tabs are, but you can choose different uh, displays for that. I played with this a little bit. I'm not sure what that is, so we won't go into it. And then these completed icons, we'll see this later. These are just pop-ups that uh, display when products are produced or things happen. I'm gonna leave them all enabled. And the one that I would suggest you change here is movement speed. Now I've already, I've already adjusted it down to 59 for me. And that, I'll exit out of here. That's gonna control like when we mouse, how fast the map moves or when we use the, actually the keyboard to uh, move the map or the mouse actually we can use. It'll control how fast that is. So I've got that set to 
uh, like I said, 59 here. If you um, find that it's moving too fast, I would suggest coming in here and slowing it down. That's basically what I did, slowed it down quite a bit. Then the other options that are interesting, at least for me, uh, would be way here at the bottom, the color theme. So when you first launch the game, you're not gonna be able to change the color, the color scheme here. And I'll show you what they look like. So if we pick cold, you can see the map changes quite a bit. Kind of the color temperature, there's warm, winter, summer. We won't go through all of them. I'm gonna choose this ARR because I like a little more saturated colors and the sky looks a little better, I think, in this one. But in order to choose your colors, I believe you need to enable this experimental mode and then you need to set the quality to at least good before you'll be able to do that. And then once you change this quality setting, you're gonna need to just restart the, uh, launch a new game. I, I don't think you need to close the whole game down, but I think you have to need to start a new game. So I've already done that. I've chosen a fantastic uh, graphics quality and I've chosen the ARR color theme, but you can play with that and choose what looks best for you. And that's pretty much it on the settings. So that's what we'll go with. Here's our starting uh, little city, as I mentioned, and it's got some buildings already in place. We've got an operation center, and then we've got, let's see here, what is this guy? I believe, let me just uh, clear out of that. Now this guy's not showing what it is, but I believe this is a tool warehouse. There it is, as we mouse over it, if you look at the top right of the screen, you'll see it's showing me what the, what the building is. So that's a tool warehouse. We've got another one over here. And then if we look underneath, and we're about to go over the camera controls here in a second, we've got four lifters, it looks like. And then we've got two of these capacitor bridges. So we'll get into all of that. Uh, also, if we looked at the top right, we can see we've got a quest right now of building a house. And it says build a basic apartment. Zero one. So as soon as we build an apartment, we'll solve that. But let's first jump into the tutorial and uh, and go through. There's 14 pages of tutorial here. I think we should maybe walk through, start walking through those in this episode. It'll probably take a few episodes to get through the tutorial, uh, but this is really going to help. And one of the first things here in the tutorial they mention is just how to navigate the camera. So it's a three-dimensional game and the camera movement is a little unique and it took me a little while to get used to it so i think it's worth spending a little time on here so mouse wheel right now i'm doing mouse wheel that's just zooming back out pretty straightforward if i uh, hold the left mouse down let's see oops okay or hold left mouse to scroll this ui oh that's to scroll this ui here too so if i scroll here it's just explaining how to move through the tutorial so here i'm scrolling in this tutorial Hold the left mouse so I can click and drag the tutorial as well. And then to get to the next page of the tutorial, obviously we just hit the next button at the top right. But, uh, and then F1 to open the tutorial screen. So let's go next. Here's the camera movement. Sorry about that. So camera control. So WASD, here we go for that to move the camera. Or we can uh, drag the right mouse button. And depending on how far you move the mouse, uh, right or left, that's how fast you're gonna move. And then the middle mouse drag. So if I click on the middle mouse button, if you have a middle mouse button, that's allowing me to rotate or go up and down here like this. And then the mouse wheel is zoom, I already mentioned that. But there's some more controls because we're eventually gonna be building upside down. And scrolling can be a little tedious uh, to do that. So it says here at the bottom, tip F for more camera functions. So let's do that. I'm just going to get to a normal view here. I'm going to hold down the F key. And now I've got this unique kind of GUI where I've got the F key depressed. I don't have any mouse buttons pressed, but I can just move around and select from these four different options here. So if I do reset, that takes me to the default view. If I hover over a block and do floor, so I'm just mousing over and now I'm letting up the F key, boom. It kind of shows me where the center plane is, I guess, for lack of a better description is. And it just kind of 
draws out, um, I don't know what you'd call this, matrices or a coordinate system just to show you kind of where the center line is. And again, I just hover the mouse over something, hit F, hit floor, and it gives me this display. So that could be useful at some point. We'll see. The other things you can do, uh, let's see, we did reset already. Focus, that's pretty self-explanatory. So if I mouse over here by these rocks off to the right of the screen and I hit focus, that's just going to center the screen towards me, uh, towards where I had the mouse. Pretty straightforward in case you don't want to use the WASD. And then the last one is maybe the most interesting and useful, and that is flip. So if I, again, I'm just uh, hitting the F key, mousing down. I still got the F key pressed and now I let up, boom. And now I flipped things. So when we get around to building upside down, uh, that's just an easy way to change the camera movement. And I think you're going to find that pretty darn useful uh, as you play because doing the scroll um, or the center mouse button to see the underside is, it can get a little tedious. You'll probably be doing that too, but that flip button is pretty, pretty handy. And then I guess I should mention where you put the mouse when you hit the F key is where that little menu is going to show up. So if I'm way off here to the right of the screen and I hit F, you know, some of this, some of these options are going to be kind of cut off by the screen. So, but if you do it in the middle, hit flip, boom, easy. All right. There's two more things in there and then we'll move on. But uh, I just want to make sure that we cover this or maybe over cover this because, uh, like I said, when I first started playing, I didn't know about those camera controls and it was a little tedious to uh, move around my town here. So I've got the F key pressed. And there's two things there. I'm colorblind. I'm guessing that's orange, but you can see there's a W and an S. So while holding the F key, if I press the W key, up we go. Boom. Nice. And as you can assume, once I hit the S key, we'll go down a level. So that's another way to kind of change your camera position. So the F key is your friend. The center mouse button is your friend. Pretty useful. And then you can either choose to right click and drag to navigate around, or you can use the WASD keys. All right, enough of that. That's enough time spent on that, but I think it's useful. Okay, let's go to the next item here in the tutorial. I'll just click the next button, boom. Okay, tutorial, mining and crafting. Okay, open the mining tool, you can use the space bar, click at a floating mineral for mining raw materials, and then for crafting, use crafting. All right, and it says tip. Spacebar is the mining tool and E is the world inventory. Okay, so spacebar is the mining tool, right? So I just hit the spacebar, we brought up the mining tool. If you look at the bottom right, there's also the little pickaxe here. That's the same, you can get to the mining tool the same way um, just by clicking the button. So spacebar or the button. And now we're in the mining tool. So now I'm just gonna WASD my way over to something to mine. So if we look here at this rock, it shows we've got, let's see, does it tell me what those minerals are? I thought it did. Let's see if I click it. Okay, so now we're starting to mine. And I believe, oh yeah, it says right there, iron ore. And I believe the one right next to it is some stone. So if I just left click or primary click on this, it spins up some mining and dumps some ore into our inventory. I'll show you that in a second. And you can queue up, I believe, eight eight of these little mining operations. So let me click eight times and then keep your eye down here on this little, on our hot bar. And I think we're gonna see some, some stuff happen there. Let's just see. Okay. So I did eight, now it's saying mining queue full and you can see down here on the hot bar, that's the mining actually taking place. Cool. There it goes, that finishes up. And you'll notice here in this crafting section, so we've got the mining tool and then we've got this crafting section. We see uh, iron plates 20 and stone slabs 20. What's this stone slab? I see. They, they both say 20, you get 20 per batch, I guess. And we're able to make 25 batches of iron plates and 10 batches of stone slabs. That makes sense. So this is not inventory. This is just showing what you're able to craft. If we want to see the inventory, I'm going to right click off of this and right click usually closes the, uh, 
the windows. Sometimes you have to write, like if I right click here in the tutorial, yeah, that closes it too. Inventory is right here in the hotbar. We can hit the E key, boom, or we can just click on the button and there's the stuff we just mined. We got some iron ore and we got some stone, right? And it looks like the inventory menu brings up crafting and so does the mining. So either way, we've got this crafting menu. So I'm going to hit F1 to open up the tutorial again. I'm going to right click out of this for a second. Hit F1 for the tutorial. Now it says, okay, for crafting, use crafting. So let's, let's see what this is all about. And it's kind of showing some examples of if we use iron ore, we can turn that into iron plates and then we can turn those iron plates into gears, copper to copper plates, wood to raw wood to wood, and then uh, stone to those stone slabs. So let's try that out. I'll go ahead and click on the mining tool. Now, if I just click on the iron plates once, boom, we saw it really quick. It just crafted. Let's look at the inventory. So I just hit E and there's our batch of 20 iron plates. So we can do the same thing here from the inventory menu. I'll go ahead and craft. I'll hit this five times. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're getting 20 per batch of the stone slabs. So that is the simple manual kind of crafting process. Whoops. All right. And so I think we covered that. Let's go to the next section of the tutorial. And again, remember you needed to uh, scroll in the tutorial because uh, when I first played, one of the tutorials kind of ended like this. And I thought, oh, that must be the last screen here at the bottom. I just read the bottom. I thought I was done, but there was actually some more stuff that I missed. So don't forget to scroll if you go through the tutorial. All right, let's keep moving. Basic building. Okay, before you can build some buildings, it needs materials. Uh, let's start by mining some of the iron ore floated on the sky. And you'll notice that the translation here to English is a little rough. I haven't had any problem figuring out what is meant by, by this stuff, uh, but that's something that the developer knows uh, they're going to work on and improve before the final release, but it is a little choppy, the English here. All right, so mine some iron ore. So let's do that. We just actually did it, right? But let's do it again. Here's iron ore. Again, we just grab the pickaxe or you can hit the space bar. And we need to put the pickaxe over the ore and then just left click or primary click. If you've got your uh, mouse buttons mapped differently. There it goes. So that's putting iron ore in inventory. We did that. Now craft some iron plates and stone slabs from the crafting menu. We just did that. We can do it again. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Okay, after some, after you get some iron plates and stone slabs, we can start working on expanding an area to build something. Select structure foundation from the building selection menu. Foundation one. All right, <clears throat> so what does all that mean? If we look at the hot bar down here, number one is structure kind of buildings. Number two is city buildings. Number five is utility buildings. And I imagine there'll be more that pop up here. That's why we go from two to five. But if I just hit the number one key right now, let's just see what happens. Okay. Yeah. It brings up the different buildings under that category. And this, this collection of buildings will grow right now. There's just a single thing we can build in that category. And it's called the structure foundation. And if I hit the number two, yep, basic apartment. And as you expect, if I hit five, we see some other things we can build. So this is basically our building menu down here. Let's see what it wants us to build. Okay, it talked about the structure, right? Let's see, did I scroll past it? Okay, select the structure foundation, build it connected from an already built structure. So what I believe this means and I'll show you. Let's go look here a little closer. So these little kind of rebar things, these are the structure foundations. And we can tell when we mouse over stuff, right? It tells us in the top left what it is. So those are structure foundations. And from what I understand, we have to connect to one that's already built. So if I go to my build menu down here for structure, boom, and I select structure foundation, boom. Now I can attach these. You can kind of see where it's going to build. 
it's a little like i said it's 3d so it's a little different to get you know your get oriented with your camera and stuff to figure out where you're building but let's go ahead and i'm just going to build some of these structure foundations and we'll just see how it goes boom there goes one being built there's one there's one and let's just fill this area in i can click and drag and fill a whole area full of them and it's showing what it's using now it used that cost us some money and it cost us some materials so if we hover over this again structure foundation we can see it took what it looks like two steel plates for that and then the mt there is how much weight that has added to our our city here so if you watch the preview video, you know already that these little guys down here, these little spinners are what's keeping our whole city afloat. So they can only sustain a certain amount of weight. And so that little kind of thing that looks like a weight that says MT on it, that's just showing you how much weight each one of these uh, foundation, structure foundations is, uh, is adding to our, our city. And then it costs two steel plates. And then that first thing with a C is the kind of the currency or credits. I guess I'll just call it credits. So it's 100 credits for each one. If we look at the bottom left, we've got, you know, almost half a million credits. So we're in good shape. Don't have to worry about that. All right. So we've built a little platform here of these structure foundations. Let's go back to the tutorial and see what it wants us to do next. It says quickly tap right click to deselect the building tool. All right, so we just do that. Now it says levitate network. It says select levitate network from the building selection menu and build it on the structure foundation that you built. Okay, I'm gonna do, cause I kinda know where we're headed. I'm gonna go ahead and pop down another structure foundation right off of this guy, boom. And then let's do what they're suggesting here. We'll go levitate network from the building selection menu utility. So that's over here, five utility. I'm on the hot bar at the bottom of the screen. And I select levitate network and we can see what the cost is. This is a bit more expensive. So go ahead and select that. And now it says I have to build that on a structure foundation. All right, so if I place it here, you can see it's giving me, I guess that's a light blue and I'm colorblind, so I may Get the colors wrong here <laughs> but it looks light blue to me that's telling me it's good to build if i attempt to build it somewhere else just out here in the sky uh let's see or uh, let's see if i try to build it i guess it's not even giving me the option to do that say i try to place it on top of this road it's gonna tell me that i need to build this on a foundation or a structure foundation so it's, if you try to build something in the wrong place, it will give you a little message that hopefully gives you a clue as to what you're missing. Sometimes it'll be a missing resource. You may not have the metal plates or some other component required, but this one's saying, hey, you need to have, this needs to be built on a foundation or a structure foundation. We have a structure foundation right down here that we placed. So let's just drop it down, boom. And there's an extension of our Levitate network. So again, from the preview video, if you watch that, the levitate network is really, you can think of it as just roads. And there we see like a, a right click. Here you can see a kind of floating truck. If we look, let's see if I get a different camera angle here. Bear with me. Again, it's, it's a little getting used to the camera. But if I do the F and I go down, so, and we go find a truck. Our city's pretty small, so we don't have much traffic right now. And this guy's kind of trying to get away from me. But you can see here that that's floating, and that's why they call it a levitate network. And we'll see a bunch more of that later. Anyway, so we built our one block of the levitate network. Let's go ahead, and we've seen how that works. So let's go ahead to the next step in the tutorial. And eventually, we'll get around to building this apartment. But we need to kind of understand this stuff first. Okay, page five of the tutorial. Let's see here. Foundation and house. All right, foundation acts like a hard ground for some solid buildings, like the basic apartment and the utility service. 
Foundations have a high weight, so only use it when necessary, and you can't build water pipes or power cables under a foundation, all right? You can only build a foundation on a structure foundation, and the structure foundation is that is the one that we just built. So we were right over here. We built all these structure foundations. Okay, now build a foundation in a three by three grid. All right. So we'll go to structures. Let me get rid of this crafting stuff. So that's out of our way. Go ahead and click structure. And this time we're doing not the structure foundation, but the foundation. I'll click that and select it. And it says build foundations on a three by three grid. I can just click and drag as you might expect and boom. There's our foundations. And you saw a little pop up there that just showed how much that cost. So that's our foundation. And we built that because the apartments and utility services require us to build them on these foundations. So let's go ahead and keep moving down here. Basic apartment. And that's kind of what we need to do over here in the top right. That's our quest. Before you build a basic apartment on that foundation, let's look at the yellow beam, the cyan beam, and the white beam that show in the building highlight area. Okay, so what are they talking about? Well, if I go to city here down in the hot bar and I select basic apartment and I go to try and place this guy, now you can see there's the three three bars here. I'll hit that rotate key, but you can kind of, hopefully you can see those bars. They're on the left side of this building. A yellow one, a white one, and a cyan one. And now those represent the different... Uh, Network. So it says right here, the yellow beam shows where you should connect your power cables. The cyan beam shows where you should connect the water pipe. And the white beam shows where you should connect the levitate network. And then it says rotate with R and T. Now T, T does something kind of unique. Uh, does it say what it does? Okay. If we look at the, in the kind of the top right of the screen, shows we're in build mode. We've got basic apartment selected and it shows R to rotate. And then it shows T is this thing offset. So I'm just going to hit the T key and you can watch what it does. It kind of just wiggles it around one space at a time across the different building blocks. So I'm not sure how you use this key, how, why it, how it's useful, but that's what that does. And then R is kind of the rotate that you're familiar with what I'm familiar with. So what we need to do is rotate this in such a way that that white beam is sitting on top of the levitate network or the roads. So that one is on a road, which is good. And this one is sitting on a road, which is good, All right? If we do it like this, we got the white beam kind of going through a road. That's what they want. But it's saying, but it's not letting me build this because I don't have, oh, well, this one tells me right here. So if I go and left click, it says, hey, you're missing materials, raw wood. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to right click to get out of the build menu. Boom. And now let's go get some wood. And we do that just like we got the iron. So I'm going to pick the mining tool and I can just use the space bar. And I'm going to look for a forest block. We got some right here. Even though this one doesn't have trees, I just left click. Boom, boom, boom. And now we're going to harvest up some of that wood and some, we get some dirt as well. We can see that in the inventory is at E. So yeah, here's our dirt that we just harvested and here's the raw wood. So I'll right click to get out of those and go back to trying to place our apartment. Boom. Now we're getting a happy, uh, happy build placement color here saying it's okay. You can build it any way you want. You don't even have to have the road hooked up. I'm still going to let you place it, but we just need to make sure that's why it's saying, Hey, check this in advance. We want the yellow beam where the power cables can be connected and the cyan beam where water can be connected and the white beam where the road is. Okay. So the white beam is where the road is. Let's look at these other guys. So we just need to make sure that we can hook up water and power kind of right next to that white beam as well. So I'm going to place this and then we'll see. I'll explain how this works. It's a little, little tricky in the beginning. 
All right, so I'm just going to left click to place it. Boom. All right, and it says, hey, you just unlocked the research system. Hit T to browse the technology. We'll do that in a minute. I'm going to right click to get out of that. I'm going to right click to get that. I'm going to right click again. And I'm going to right click one more time just for, for good measure. All right, so we placed our apartment building. And if I, let me, uh, if I click on it, primary click on it, there's some stuff here we need to see. So right here on the left side, you can see I'll click through this. There's a bunch of information you can see about the apartment. But what we're most interested in right off the bat is this one that says house, the very top one. And these three displays right here that I'm mousing over. So the first one is showing our Levitate network. And the fact that this is nice and colorful shows us that this building is connected to the road network. So that's all good. This one is showing us, hey, we're not connected to power yet. And this one is showing we're not connected to water yet. So those are problems we need to solve and we're going to do it right now. So let's, uh, let me go back into the tutorial and just make sure that the next screen doesn't just tell us how to do it. Let's go to the next one. Okay, here it is. Tutorials, pipe and cable. And then we'll, we'll wrap up this episode after this, after we get the power and the water hooked up. Okay, in this screen, We'll show each tile location. Well, each tile icon shows what the status of that tile uh, electricity. Okay, let's see. In this screen, we'll show each tile icon show what the status of that tile electricity will work the same, but in a different color. Okay, this is a little choppy, you know, very choppy English here. Okay, have the water pipe connected to the network. So basically, it's saying. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Oh, we might have to come back to it because I don't totally remember how this how this quite works. Oh, there is a display for this. Let's uh let's go real quick into the settings or into controls. And then this shows all the different controls in the game. And I think there's a view that shows you the water network and the power network. Technology, quick access, escape, quick, nine, city status, building menu, game menu, quick load. Now you guys probably already see what I'm looking for. Build demolition, copy, nope, 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 nope. Mining tool, select last building, select the building tab, nope. Okay, I don't see it. We're going to come across it uh, in a little bit here, I'm sure. Anyway, let's go ahead and go back to that tutorial and just see what it was telling us for power. So basically what it's saying is, if I, I think if I select power, so I'm going to go into utility and I'm going to select water pipe. Does this work now? So basically these little screenshots are showing us that if we see a box like this over the structure, it's showing that we have a water pipe and it's connected to the network. If we have this box, but it's bordered with like this white or off white color, then there's a water pipe there, but it's not connected to the network. There's no water flowing through it. And it's very similar with the electricity. We'll see this. And then this one, the kind of this square without any border whatsoever is saying that's where the building is going to check for the water pipe connection and connect to the network. And then if that, if that little box without the border is white, it means uh, it's looking to hook up water there, but it's not currently connected and water can't pass through this tile to another water pipe. All right. So let's just go ahead and hook it up. If I click on the apartment, again, we see the cyan beam here and this yellow beam. And so as long as I have water and power connected up right next to that, then we're going to be in good shape. So let's do that. I'm going to right click off of this menu or I'll just use this little X, I guess. 
Let's go into utility. We'll do water first. I'm going to select water pipe. And now we're starting to see those little blocks. So at the very center of the screen, you can see there's water all flowing in these nine tiles. So if I want to connect that up, there is the little white tile here that I've got the mouse on saying, hey, this building is looking for water and it's right there and it's not connected. All I have to do to connect where water is here to this one where it isn't is just drop down this water pipe just like that. Boom. So now if we click on the apartment building, the water now has has this little tile here has shown up as colored. So it's getting water. We can do the same thing for the electricity. All right, I'll close this menu for the apartment. We'll go to utility. I'll select power cables. And right now, we the energy grid is sitting on top of the water grid. So we can do the exact same thing we just did. Boom. And there we go. If I go into the apartment, now we've got, we're connected to the road system. We're connected to power and we're connected to water. So if that seemed confusing, I apologize, but we're going to, we'll see more of it and it'll become more intuitive. It takes a little while to get used to it. And I guess, I think there is a way to bring up the power network and the, uh, water network. So we'll see that, but worst case, we could just click on the build menu and then now you can see it. So right now our wa entire water network consists of these nine tiles. And then the one we just added for 10, that's it. But as we expand our city, like if I want to move water out this way, I can just click and expand our water network. So that should, oh, I must be out of materials. Oh no, there it is. Is it building? Let's put one here. Boom. So there, I just expanded the water network out this way. And in my first playthrough, that's kind of what I did. I had the water network and the power network just kind of follow the roads. Um, because you cannot build water through these foundations here. And it does seem like the water and power need to kind of live on this single plane here where we've got all these structure blocks. So we don't put water and power uh, up in the sky or down below underneath our, our village. It all sits on this, this central plane. Anyway, let's wrap this first episode here. We made a little progress. We got through the first five or six pages of our 14 page tutorial. We placed our apartment. So we satisfied that quest. We learned about the water and the power network and the levitate network. Again, levitate networks, just the roads. And then we worked through some of the initial settings in the game, um, just to control the camera movement, the scroll speed, and then the color scheme. So cool. We're making progress. Hopefully you, uh, Enjoy this introduction. We'll continue it on in the next episode. For now, this is GliderCat signing off, saying I'll see you in the next one.